Naming ionic compounds follows a simple set of rules. The first rule is just write the cation name down. Typically, this means just the metal name. Um, second step is if you have more than one possible charge for the cation, use Roman numerals in parentheses to represent which charge you're talking about. So this typically applies to things that are in the center of the periodic table, the transition metals. Things like iron and copper can have more than one charge. Things in groups one and two, so the alkali metals and the alkali earth metals, they typically have just one single charge, so you don't have to clarify with the Roman numeral. The third step is to write the anion name, but switch the ending. So something like chlorine, its ion is a Cl minus ion, so you don't call it chlorine anymore, you call it chloride. Uh, polyatomic anions have, um, they're, they're kind of exceptions to this rule, and the rules for those are explained in the textbook. So we'll do a couple of examples here. We'll start with KCl. This is the potassium ion associated with the chloride ion. So potassium is one of those group one metals that only has one possible charge, so we can ignore rule number two right now. So we just write potassium. The chlorine ion is called chloride, so we write potassium chloride. Calcium nitride, C-A-N, is made up of calcium two plus ions from the group two. It can only have a two plus charge. Nitrogen's ion is an N3 minus ion called nitride. So we write calcium nitride. Iron is one of those things that can have more than one charge. Typically, iron will have a plus two or a plus three charge. The nitrate ion, the NO3 minus ion, is one of those exceptions, those polyatomic exceptions that you'll have to just know the, the name of, um, whether by looking in a table or just memorizing it. It's made up of Fe3 pluses and NO3 minuses. There are three nitrates for every one iron. And what we do to name this is we write the metal name, iron, and we specify that it's the iron 3 and a uh, cation, and then we just write nitrate. We don't need to clarify that there are three nitrates. Uh, that's implied by the Roman numeral 3 that belongs to the iron. If iron is the 3 plus charge, however many nitrates there are, they have to give you three negative charges to balance that out. And if you happen to know it or you don't know it and you look it up, you can find that nitrate is one minus, and therefore there have to be three of them. The next example is iron two chloride. Iron two implies that it's the Fe two plus ion that's involved. And chloride, as we've seen earlier, is a Cl minus ion. So there have to be two minus charges to balance out that two plus. So that means we have FeCl2. Magnesium sulfate is not one of the options that gives you multiple charges. Magnesium is in the second group, therefore it can only have one possible charge, and that charge has to be 2 plus, Mg2 plus. And the sulfate ion, if you either know it or you can look it up, you'll find out that it's SO4, 2 minus. And if you have a two plus and a two minus, when you put those two things together, they exactly balance each other out. So you end up with MgSO4. When there are no subscripts involved, representing multiple ions, you don't actually have to include uh, any parentheses. So what we've written is correct. And if you clarified it by adding those parentheses, that would actually be incorrect. You only add the parentheses when you have multiple polyatomic ions. 